Welcome back to Fireside Unsolved. Before we dive into the mysteries of lost artifacts in our 100th episode of Fireside Unsolved, we want to take a moment to thank each of you for being a part of this journey with us. From our very first episode to this milestone, your support, curiosity, and passion for the unknown have fueled our exploration of some of history's most fascinating phenomena, artifacts, objects, photos, and of course, unsolved cases. We're incredibly grateful to our amazing subscribers. You are the heart of this channel. We're also happy to announce we reached the 12,000 subscriber mark. Welcome to all of our new subscribers and viewers to the channel. We're glad you're here with us. We promise you don't want to miss a single mystery, so hit that bell icon to get notified every time we uncover a new unsolved story. Here's to many more episodes, more mysteries, and more of your incredible support. Thank you for making Fireside Unsolved what it is today. Throughout human history, artifacts have served as the tangible threads that weave together the story of our past. They are more than mere objects. They are symbols of power, expressions of art, and records of the cultures that shaped our world. Artifacts hold the secrets of ancient civilizations, offer insights into human ingenuity, and connect us to the people and places that came before us. But what happens when these priceless pieces of our heritage are lost to time, vanishing without a trace? In this video, we'll uncover the mysteries behind some of the most elusive lost treasures of history. The Great Bell of Damazedi, once the largest bell ever cast, which mysteriously disappeared beneath the waters of Burma. The Florentine Diamond, a gemstone of unmatched brilliance that slipped from the pages of history. The Amber Room, a magnificent chamber crafted entirely of amber and gold, looted during World War II and never found. The Crown Jewels of King John, lost in the marshlands of England under mysterious circumstances. And the Imperial Seal of China, an emblem of ultimate authority that vanished, leaving a void in China's imperial history. These lost artifacts continue to capture the imagination, reminding us of the fragility of history and the enduring mysteries that still await discovery. Join us as we explore these captivating tales of loss, legend, and the ongoing quest to reclaim the forgotten pieces of our shared past on episode 100, Five of the Greatest Artifacts Lost to Time. Imagine a bell so colossal, so exquisitely crafted, that its sound could resonate across a kingdom. This was the Great Bell of Damazedi, a legendary artifact of Burma, now Myanmar, lost to history, and resting somewhere in the depths of a river, waiting to be rediscovered. Cast in 1484 by King Damazedi, the bell was reputedly one of the largest ever made, with estimates varying from 300 to 330 tons, and a diameter of approximately 16 feet. Its composition was a mix of bronze, with some historical accounts suggesting it may have been adorned with gold, reflecting the king's immense wealth and dedication to the Buddhist faith. For over a century, the great bell of Damazidi stood proudly at the Shwedagon Pagoda in Yangon, its deep, resounding tones echoing across the city and beyond. It was said to be a gift from King Damazidi to the pagoda, intended to bring peace and prosperity to his kingdom. The bell was a marvel of engineering and artistry, a testament to the grandeur of Burma's ancient civilization. However, the bell's fate took a dramatic turn in 1608, when Felipe de Brito e Nicote, a Portuguese mercenary and self-styled ruler of the region, sought to seize it. De Brito, eager to plunder Burma's treasures, believed that melting down the bell would provide a fortune in metal for his cannons. The operation to transport the bell from the pagoda to the river was fraught with difficulties. As the massive bell was being moved along the Bago River, the raft carrying it collapsed, and the great bell of Damazidi plunged into the river's depths, disappearing into the murky water. The loss of the bell was a significant blow to the people of Burma, and it quickly became the stuff of legend. Over the centuries, numerous attempts have been made to locate the bell, but its whereabouts remain unknown. Some theories suggest that the bell might still be resting at the bottom of the Bago River, buried beneath layers of sediment and mud. Divers and treasure hunters have explored the river, but their searches have yielded no conclusive results. Another theory posits that the bell might have been moved or hidden by local villagers who, over time, 
may have decided to relocate it to protect it from further plunder. According to this theory, the bell could be in a secret location known only to a few. A third theory speculates that the bell was eventually recovered, but then lost again under mysterious circumstances. Some believe it may have been stolen by subsequent treasure hunters or destroyed during conflicts in the region. The Great Bell of Damazidi's mystery endures, captivating historians, archaeologists, and treasure hunters. Its story is more than just about a lost artifact. It reflects a time when art, faith, and ambition intersected. The bell represents a bridge to the past, a piece of history that continues to echo through the ages. As long as it remains lost, the bell will be a symbol of both the grandeur of ancient Burma and the enduring allure of forgotten treasures. The Florentine diamond was an illustrious gem celebrated for its remarkable clarity and captivating brilliance. Believed to have been cut in the 15th century, the diamond's origins are still debated, but its story is one of opulence and mystery. The diamond first came into prominence when it was acquired by the powerful Medici family of Florence in the early 16th century. It became a symbol of their wealth and influence, meticulously set into exquisite jewelry and worn with pride. Its unique cut, featuring an intricate 126-facet design, gave it an exceptional sparkle that enchanted those who saw it. In the turbulent times of the French Revolution, the diamond was seized and incorporated into the French crown jewels under Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon, known for his grandeur and love of luxury, greatly valued the diamond, integrating it into his imperial collection. However, following his fall from power, the diamond's trail grew cold. The Florentine diamond's fate took a mysterious turn during World War II. It is believed to have been stolen from a European noble's collection amidst the chaos of the conflict, but what happened to it afterward remains unknown. Theories abound. Some suggest it was hidden away to evade capture while others speculate that it was sold on the black market or lost in the upheaval of war. Despite extensive searches and numerous attempts to recover it, the Florentine diamond has never been found. Its disappearance remains one of history's great mysteries, captivating historians, gem enthusiasts, and treasure hunters alike. The story of the Florentine diamond is a poignant reminder of the fragility of historical treasures and the enduring allure of lost relics. Each piece of its history adding to its legendary status. The Amber Room, often called the Eighth Wonder of the World, was an unparalleled masterpiece crafted entirely from amber, gold leaf, and mirrors. A room where every surface gleamed with golden hues, a dazzling spectacle of light and craftsmanship that seemingly transported you in an instant to a realm of opulence and grandeur. The Amber Room was originally constructed in the early 18th century in the Catherine Palace of Sarskoye Selo, near St. Petersburg, Russia. It was designed by German craftsmen Andreas Schluter and Bartolomeo Rastrelli and adorned with thousands of pieces of amber set into intricate patterns. The room was a marvel of Baroque artistry, its walls shimmering with a golden glow that enchanted all who saw it. Over the decades, the Amber Room was celebrated as a symbol of Russian elegance and artistic achievement. It underwent several renovations and expansions, further enhancing its splendor. However, during World War II, the room's fate took a dark turn. In 1941, as German forces advanced into Soviet territory, the Amber Room was looted and dismantled by the Nazis. Despite attempts to preserve it, the room was stolen and transported to Germany, where it vanished from public view. The room's disappearance marked the beginning of one of history's greatest art heists, Despite extensive efforts by historians, treasure hunters, and even amateur sleuths, the Amber Room has never been recovered. Numerous theories abound regarding its fate. Some suggest it was lost during the war or destroyed in bombing raids. Others believe it might still be hidden in a secret location, perhaps in a remote bunker or private collection. In the decades following the war, various attempts have been made to reconstruct the Amber Room based on historical records and photographs. The most notable reconstruction, completed in 2003, seeks to capture the original's grandeur and keep its memory alive. Yet, the original Amber Room's mystery endures, symbolizing both the grandeur of pre-war artistry and the enduring quest for lost treasures. As long as it remains lost, the room continues to captivate imaginations, reminding us of the treasures that once were and the relentless pursuit to uncover them.
There was once a collection of royal regalia so exquisite that it was said it was the embodiment of the splendor and power of medieval England. These were the crown jewels of King John, a treasure of unmatched significance that has become one of history's most elusive artifacts. King John, the controversial monarch of England from 1199 to 1216, was not only known for his turbulent reign, but also for the legendary jewels that adorned his crown. The crown jewels of King John were said to be a dazzling array of priceless gems and ornate gold work, reflecting the opulence and majesty of the medieval English monarchy. Among these treasures were intricately crafted crowns, scepters, and other royal regalia, each piece a testament to the artistry and craftsmanship of the time. The story of the crown jewels takes a dramatic turn during the tumultuous period of King John's reign. In 1216, as the king faced mounting pressures from both internal and external adversaries, he was forced to flee from his enemies. In his desperate flight, he entrusted the precious jewels to a trusted party for safekeeping. However, their journey was fraught with peril, and as the king's forces were defeated, the jewels vanished without a trace. The loss of the crown jewels has been shrouded in mystery and speculation ever since. Historical accounts suggest that the jewels might have been hidden in the marshlands of eastern England, possibly buried to keep them from falling into enemy hands. Some believe that the treasures were lost in the treacherous terrain, swallowed by the shifting tides and muddy depths. Other theories propose that the jewels were recovered by local inhabitants and hidden in secret locations, their whereabouts known only to a select few. There are even suggestions that the jewels may have been stolen by opportunistic thieves who knew of their value. Despite numerous searches and investigations over the centuries, the crown jewels of King John remain lost. Their disappearance is a poignant reminder of the impermanence of even the most magnificent treasures. The Imperial Seal of China, an artifact so significant that it represented the very essence of imperial power, was a revered object that held the divine right to rule and the sacred essence of the Chinese emperors. Known as the Heirloom Seal of the Realm, this extraordinary artifact was central to the governance and legitimacy of the Chinese imperial dynasty. The imperial seal was believed to have been crafted in the early Zhou dynasty, around the 11th century BCE, and was one of the most important symbols of the Chinese emperor's legitimacy and sovereignty. Made from a single piece of jade, the seal was engraved with characters that conveyed the divine mandate to rule. It was not merely a stamp, but a profound emblem of the emperor's authority, used to authenticate official documents and decrees. The seal's storied history spanned several dynasties, becoming a treasured heirloom passed down through generations of rulers. It played a crucial role in maintaining the continuity of imperial power and was deeply revered in Chinese culture. However, its fate took a dramatic turn during the turmoil of the Qing dynasty's fall. In 1912, with the abdication of the last Qing emperor, Puyi, and the establishment of the Republic of China, the imperial seal's status was cast into uncertainty. Amidst the upheaval of political change and civil strife, the seal was reportedly taken by various factions or misplaced during chaotic transitions. Despite numerous investigations and claims over the years, the exact fate of the imperial seal remains unknown. Some theories suggest that it was hidden to protect it from being seized or destroyed during the revolution. Others speculate that it was lost or stolen during the period of upheaval, possibly ending up in private collections or even being sold on the black market. Its disappearance is more than just a loss of a physical artifact. It symbolizes the upheaval and transition of a grand era in Chinese history. The seal's story continues to inspire awe and curiosity, reminding us of the profound connection between artifacts and the legacy of a nation's heritage. That wraps up this exploration into the mysteries of lost artifacts. From the depths of Burmese rivers to hidden vaults in war-torn Europe, these treasures continue to capture our imagination and fuel the quest for discovery. Each of these objects holds a unique story, a fragment of history that reminds us of the enduring allure of the unknown. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Fireside Unsolved. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Until next time, take it easy and be easy, you filthy bastards. <laughs>